I will be talking on management of stall fed goats. To begin with, let's see the contribution of goats in livestock sector. Goats, they are the second most populous livestock species with the population of 148.88 million. If we see uh, their contribution in meat production, they contribute about 13.72% in total meat production next to poultry and cara beef. Since a significant amount of cara beef has, uh, it gets exported. So we can say that goat meat or chivon is the second most popular meat in India. If we see the nutritional composition of chivon or goat meat, it contains relatively lower calories, lower fat, lower saturated fat, lower cholesterol, the protein content is comparable, whereas it contains iron relatively higher than chicken, beef, pork, and lamb. So we can say that chivon is a, a good alternative among non-vegetarians than chicken, beef, pork, or lamb. If we see the contribution of goat in total milk production, they contribute about 2.95%. There is uniqueness in milk potential of goat also. The goat can produce milk about 15 to 20% of their body weight, whereas cow can produce only 8 to 10%. Milk production potential of goat is very, very less utilized in India. So there is a huge uh, opportunity in dairy goat business. Talking more about the peculiarities of goat milk, goat milk is a naturally homogenized milk. The fat globules in goat milk are significantly smaller than cow milk, which make it easily digestible. The goat milk also contains higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acid and conjugated linoleic acid. This conjugated linoleic acid has ability to reduce allergy and has anti-inflammatory effect. The medium chain triglycerides in goat milk, like scarpic, caproic, Caprylic acid possesses antimicrobial activity. The amino acid taurine present in goat milk helps in brain development. Uh, furthermore, the whey protein alpha lect albumin has effect in killing tumor cells also in patients with skin and bladder cancer. So we can say that the so many peculiarities of chivon and goat milk, as well as goats are resistant to adverse herse climatic condition and they can be maintained in stubble and wheat, they suits best in today's condition of increased rate of climate change. So now let us see why stall feeding is gaining attention and is important. Our country maintains around 11% of total world livestock in limited 2.4% of world geographical area. If we see our population, we have crossed 135 crore and we are second most populous country in the world. So in a nutshell, our community land and grazing area for small ruminants is decreasing and it has reduced significantly. So to balance the demand and supply of livestock products under this changing resource scarcity scenario, especially land, alternate rearing system will be needed. So intensive rearing or stall feeding rearing system of goats is a promising option for food as well as nutritional security. So we can rear goats in three rearing system, either in stall feeding, semi-intensive or extensive system. In stall feeding, goats are provided with all feeds and fodder in their stall itself with zero or no grazing facility. Whereas in semi-intensive rearing system, goats are provided with feed supplements like concentrate in their stall with limited grazing facility like six to eight hours. Whereas in extensive system, goats are mainly reared in available grazing land with no stall feeding. In stall feeding, goats attain maximum weight earliest with high feed efficiency. Whereas in semi intensive system, they take moderate time to attain maximum weight with moderate feed efficiency. Whereas in extensive system, goats take maximum time to attain maximum weight with lowest feed efficiency. If we talk of uh, labor and capital requirement, 
it is high in stall feeding it is comparatively moderate in semi intensive system and it is lowest in extensive system but labor requirement or uh, there will be a man, need of man for supervision while grazing if we see the cost of unit meat and milk production it will be highest in stall feeding it will be moderate in semi intensive system and it will be lowest in extensive system stall feeding of goats require more capital investment but it can be profitable when we do it with strategy or scientifically so important managemental strategies for profit in stall feeding system are number 1 correct selection of breed this is very important if a farmer is interested to sell live animals then large size and prolific goat breeds like beetle osmanabadi jamnapari they must be preferred whereas if a farmer is interested to sell chivon or dress meat then breeds with high dressing percentage and pro prolificacy should be selected like black bengal and pantaja the second important strategy under stall feeding system should be systematic and comfortable housing and for this housing of young kids growing bucklings and goatlings and adult animals like doe and buck should be done separately this is because for the effective management i am repeating this this is very important we should house young growing and adult animals separately this is for effective management especially because it will reduce the agonistic behavior that is fighting behavior especially during feeding moreover large size breeds they must be provided with 1.5 time covered area as a open paddock for exercise the third important managemental strategy under stall feeding system is scientific feeding the feeding cost can account up to 60 to 65% of total rearing cost in a stall feeding system so we should we should feed balanced and right amount of feed to the goats the fourth important managemental strategy should be efficient breeding it is very important we should make efforts to bred goats at right age and at right time this is because unnecessary delay in conception will increase the cost of rearing and this increase in cost of rearing will be mainly by increasing feeding and labor cost the fifth important managemental strategy is disease and health management proper care regular cleaning disinfection of farm premises as well as disease control through regular and timely deworming and vaccination is very important because diseases affect growth rate and can severely affect farm profitability if disease is spread to flock and cause high mortality uh, recently released breed survey based on 20th livestock census it revealed that out of total goat population 63.5% is non descript and breed wise estimated number of animals it showed that black bengal is the most popular goat breed in india and it contributes about 18.6% in total goat population the other commonly reared goat breeds are marwari barbari osmanabadi and jamnapari now let's see some popular indigenous and exotic breeds that perform well under stall feeding system this is black bengal the native of this breed is west bengal this is known for excellent chivon and leather production they are medium sized meat goat if we talk of their appearance they are black with short leg i have purposefully mentioned here economic traits this is very important if a farmer select a particular breed then they should compare the economic traits of their selected breed in their flock with a standard breed so that if there exists a major difference they should contact with the livestock production scientist to resolve any managemental issue beetle it is also a very popular breed it is a large size dual purpose goat breed from punjab region if we talk of uh, their appearance they are black and tall with roman nose barbary it is also a very popular goat breed it is well suited for rearing under stall feeding condition 
if we talk of uh, their hues they are medium sized dual purpose goat breed and they are white with tan and black spots pantaja this is a newly registered breed from uttarakhand and it is a medium sized dual purpose goat breed the special feature of this goat breed is they appears like deer because of white streak on either side of their face and because of their color found to brown dorsally which becomes lighter ventrally this breed is also very prolific breed usmanabadi is also a very popular breed this breed is known for early maturity prolificacy and good dressing percentage and if we talk of the its appearance they are predominant predominantly black but we can find white color on ears or some spots on neck and forehead now this is a exotic breed of uh, goat boer this breed is considered as most desirable meat goat breed because of its excellent body conformation fast growing rate and good carcass quality the adult male weight can range from 90 to 120 kg and if we talk of its appearance this breed is white in color with brown color head neck and shoulder if we talk of its economic traits they can attain market weight of 35 kg in just 6 months with a feeding interval of 7 months so many progressive farmers are keeping boer to upgrade their flock now let's see some breeds which can be used for dairy purpose also this is jamnabari breed which is mainly found in uttar pradesh it is known as the best dairy goat breed of southeast asia and it is also a tallest goat breed of our country if we see uh, the appearance they are white with uh, with uh, we can find patches of tan over head or neck this is surti breed from gujarat surti goats are very good milk animals they can produce milk from 1.5 to 4 liters and they are also suitable for complete confinement and say uh, if we talk of its appearance they are white in color they are also very prolific as twins are born to majority of those and triplets are also can see these are two exotic breeds of goat the, we can say the best dairy breeds of goats in the world research on milk production potential of sanin and togenberg and their crossbred under indian condition have been done in crg makdum and ndri karnal those farmers those who want to start goat based dairy with both indigenous and exotic breeds they can contact these institutions for the procurement of either exotic semen or animals now let's see how to adapt goats in stall feeding dairy system the farmers can either purchase parent stock or goat breeds already well adapted to the stall feeding or zero grazing system or farmers can slowly slowly reduce the time of grazing to complete stall feeding now an important note for first time goat keepers if they are starting first time so they should start with less number of goats and after completing one or two cycles they will start increasing the size however if they want to start with large number of goats initially itself then they must take technical advice from veterinarians time to time so the second important management managemental strategy is systematic and comfortable housing so the important considerations are the goat farm it should not be within the vicinity of residential area and farm should be constructed as per the guidelines of state pollution control board generally 200 to 500 meters away from human habitation and this is for to avoid undesirable unhygienic offensive and stinky ammonical smells of urine we can see in this picture the farm is situated uh, about 200 to 300 meter away from the residential area the house or the main shed should have double slope gable type roof and floor should be raised to 6 to 9 inch from the ground this is to ensure proper drainage there should be proper fencing preferably of uh, brick wall of about 5 feet height around the goat unit or goat farm this is for the protection against wild animals 
and street dogs. When we rear goats under stall fed condition, we will be needing large amount of hay and straw. So hay and straw store, they should be built away from the main building or near water tank. This is to reduce the risk of fire. The floor for keeping flock in covered area can be made up of sand, brick on edge, cement or elevated wooden or plastic tiles floors can be used. This is the picture showing a goat on elevated plastic slated floor. Uh, this is the picture showing a buck on elevated wooden slated floor. Some progressive farmers are using these plastic slated and wooden slated floors. They are more hygienic. This is the bird's eye view of a model goat farm. A goat farm should have a five feet height fence, preferably of cement and bricks. In the front, there should be a gate with vehicle wheel or food bar facility. This is to prevent the entry of pathogenic organism like bacteria, viruses into the farm. These green color circles are fodder tree like Moringa and Subabu. We can grow fodder tree along, uh, around the farm premises. It will have multiple advantages like these trees will provide shade, clean air, and we can use the tree leaves as a fodder for the goats. The hay and straw store, it should be constructed away from the main, main shed or main building. The main shed on the either side should have an open paddock and we can build a manure tank to one end of the goat farm. This is the front view of the main shed of model goat farm. We should construct a double slope gable type roof. If the distance between two side walls is more than six meter, then we should provide king post roof truss to the roof material for proper support. The side wall height should be kept around three meters or eight to 10 feet. And the central height of the main shed, it should be kept around 12 feet. The main shed in, in the central should have a central passage of two meter. This is for easy movement or easy carrying of feed and fodder. On the either side of this central passage, we can construct different sheds or different units for different category of goats. And on the either side of this main shed, we can construct open paddock. In the main yard, on the main shed, it is very important to have different units for different category of animals that we, we have discussed earlier, like kids, doe, buck, pregnant does, they should be housed separately. As well as in the main shed, we will be having office, medicine or record room. So we can say that in main shed, we will be having adult female goat shed. We will be having buck shed. We will be having kid shed. We will be having kidding shed. And we will be having hay or straw store. We can construct a dipping tank in open paddock. This is for the prevention from ectoparasites. By constructing different sheds, or different units in the main shed, we should know the minimum floor space requirement per animal as well as limit of maximum animal per shed. An adult goat or doe, it requires one meter square space in covered area and it requires 1.5 meter square space in open area. And maximum number of goats that we should house in one shed or one unit is 60. And this is for effective management. For buck, we require 3.4 meters square space in covered area for, and they should be housed individually. For kid, they require a space of 0.4 meters square space in covered area, 0.6 meters square space in open area. And we can keep total 75 kids per, per unit or per shed. The pregnant doe, they require a space of 1.2 meter length and 1.4 meter width in a covered area and they should be housed separately or individually. Now let's see the dimensions of feeding and water trough. The adult goats will require a feeding trough of width 50 centimeters. The depth should be 30 centimeters and height should be 35 centimeters. Whereas lambs and kids, they will require same width 
but depth should be 20 cm and height should be 25 cm this is to uh, so that kids can easily eat the length of water trough is generally kept about 10% of the feeding trough this is because goats will eat at the same time but they will not drink water at the same time so we can keep generally 10% this is the figure showing different units inside main shed for 100 goats just after the entrance on the left side. We can construct a goat shed since a single shed should contain only 60 goats for effective management. We can construct a separate or another goat shed adjacent to it and just adjacent to this goat shed. We can construct buck pan, individual buck pan. For 100 goats, we will be needing around five bucks. So five to six buck pan will be enough. On the right side of the entrance, we can construct office feed storage. Since 100 goats can give around 150 kids in a year, so we can construct two kids shed and uh, just adjacent to two kids shed, we can construct kidding sheds for the pregnant does. And the other spaces are utilized for breeding room, sick pan, hay store, etc. So now let's see the dimension of a goat shed in a covered area and an open paddock for 60 goats. As I have already discussed that one goat will be needing uh, one meter square space. So 60 goats will require 60 meter square space in a covered area. So for 60 goats and uh, the maximum number of goats we should keep in a shed, in a single shed are 60 for the effective management. So a four meter wide or 15 meter in length shed will provide enough space for the 60 goats. And we can construct a open paddock adjacent to this uh, covered area. Since a goat will require 1.5 meter square area in uh, open, so 60 goats will require about 90 meter square of this area. So a 6 meter wide or 15 meter length open paddock will provide sufficient space for 60 goats. Similarly, we now see the dimensions of buck pen. A buck pen a buck will require 3.4 meter square area in covered area, uh, space in covered area. So by constructing 2 meter wide or 1.4, 1.8 meter uh, in length, a pan will provide sufficient space that is 3.6 meter square that is more than 3.4 meter square. So and similarly, uh, open paddock can be constructed adjacent to the buck pan. Similarly, we can construct kidding pan and we can we can construct uh, growing kids pan. Uh, since we can uh, we can house 75 kids per shed. So and one kid will require 0.4 meter square space. So 75 kids will require around 30 meter square space. So by constructing 7.5 meter uh, length uh, and 4 meter wide shed will be sufficient for 75 kids. And similarly, we can construct the open paddock adjacent to this covered area. This picture is showing wooden benches. Goats like to sit in elevated area. So wooden benches or cement concrete benches can be constructed in open paddock. It will enrich the environment and keeps goat happy. And we will see a good growth rate. Now we will talk about the scientific feeding. We already know that by upper means of mobile lips and very prehensive tongue, goats are able to graze short grass and they love to eat bushes and trees. That's why they are called browser. They are also very fastidious or choosy in nature with respect to cleanliness of their feet. They generally don't accept feet and fodder crushed with feet, foul smelling or in dirty condition. So goats should always be provided with feed and fodder either in manger or in open space, we can use hay or concentrate rack to offer feeds. Dry matter intake in goats is almost double than sheep. If we talk more about the feeding behavior of goats, 
goats are known to accept feed with high alkaloids and tannins they are more tolerant to feeds and fodder containing bitter substances when people and burgad leaves separately offer to goats and bullock high dry matter digestibility and high crude fiber digestibility were observed in goats similarly when khejri leaves were offered to goats and sheep high nutrient digestibility were observed in goats so tree leaves that are rich in nutrients but also contain high tannin and saponin can be utilized as a fodder for goats but they must be utilized judiciously we can include subabul at the rate of 30% we can include sesbenia at the rate of 20% we can include babul at the rate of 20% we can include khejri leaves to replace 75% of concentrate in goats and we can use moringa leaves to to replace 50% of the concentrate or we can use it as a green roughage these are the pictures of subabul leaves moringa leaves sesbenia leaves and khejri leaves it is very important that we should not waste the feed and we should give the right amount of feed to the goats if we do overfeeding there will be increase in feeding cost and if we will do underfeeding then there will be reduced growth and it will affect the breeding efficiency so if we talk of goat they are also ruminants but its feeding or their feeding is quite dissimilar they consume dry matter about 3 to 7% of their body for example milch goats they eat 5 to 7% a diameter of their body weight whereas meat goats they will eat 3 to 4% goat should not be fed more than 50% of the diameter as concentrate and the remainder of ration should contain roughages like hay silage and this is the feeding schedule for kids up to 3 months from birth to 5 day we should give them colostrum but we should note that in case of milch goat kids should not be allowed to suckle both the teats because uh, because if they will allow to suckle both teats they will consume more colostrum and it will affect the digestibility or they can they can have diarrhea which can affect the growth so we can use the colostrum to feed another or other kids this table is showing the composition of a kids starter for kids for making kids starter we can we can use gram maize groundnut wheat bran mineral mixture and common salt now see let's see the feeding of growing kids from 3 month so from 3 month we can withdraw milk and we should do feeding as per their body weight or average body weight of the animals in a shed so the weight of the animal should be taken at 15 days interval because their feed requirement or fodder requirement will increase and we should recalculate the feed requirement in a large farm it is not possible to calculate feed requirement of individual animal so feed requirement can be calculated for group now let's see how we can calculate feed requirement of growing growing kids that are housed in a separate shed or or we can say a group of 75 kids let's say the average weight of 75 kids is 10 kg so the dry matter requirement of one kid being 10 kg will be 400 g if we will take the dry matter intake as 4% of the body and if we offer concentrate at the rate of 30 to 40% of the dry matter so the concentrate requirement will be 120 to 160 g the left over dry matter requirement will be fulfilled from roughages and in roughages the ratio of dry roughage and green should be 70 to 30 percent it is very essential to offer greens to the stall fed goats this is because green is greens are the important source of carotene or vitamin a and they are also a good source of vitamins and minerals so we can say a ration for one kid per day as per the above calculation will be around 150 g concentrate 200 g dry dry roughage and 250 g green so the ration for the 75 growing kids will become 11.25 kg concentrate 15 kg hay or straw and 18.75 kg green so this will be the feeding or fodder requirement for the 75 kids now let's see some important points while feeding it is very important that we should offer feed at more frequent intervals by using hay racks and 
or manger this is because to avoid wastage which is likely to occur otherwise if you will not offer feed to them frequently uh, the well cured lucern bursim cowpea are the best source of nutrient for the goats the concentrate offered to the goats should contain 14 to 16% protein generally goats do not like to eat wheat bhusa or barley bhusa so supplementation of this bhusa with green and legume straw like pulses gram straw or concentrate mixture is advocated it will increase the feed consumption and thereby growth and goats are exceptionally fond of legumes and all leftover green feeds should be removed from the manger as it may become a hiding place for fungus or vermin we can also feed different category of goats by using icr 2013 standards for example the daily nutrient need of growing kids being 10 kg and with the body weight gain of 50 g per day will be 55 g of cp and 0.25 kg of tdn it is necessary to provide 55 g of cp to a 10 kg body weight kid if we want a 50 g per day growth similarly we can calculate as per the average body weight the commonly used feed stuffs to for concentrate preparation are maize sorghum barley oats wheat bajra ragi rice bran wheat bran groundnut cake tdgs it is very important that farmers should keep watch on prices of these grains in mandi and buy these ingredients when prices fall while feeding pregnant goats it is important that we should give them liberal leguminous fodder and the concentrate with 25% protein is very important especially during last 6 to 8 weeks of gestation this is because during this period only 70 to 80% gain in fetal mass takes place while feeding breeding bucks uh, during non breeding season bucks generally don't need grains if good quality fodder is available but during breeding season we should offer them 6, 600 to 700 gram concentrate now let's see the another important managemental strategy again uh, in under stall feeding system that is breeding management products from goat that is meat or milk are the end products of biological process that we call reproduction so it is very important that goat should reproduce regularly because unnecessarily delay will increase the cost of making unnecessarily delay in income for that farmer must keep note of determinants of reproductive efficiency and these are onset of reproductive activity or age at puberty or sexual maturity availability of fertile male counterpart interval from parturition to onset of postpartum reproductive activity reproductive seasonality and effective reproductive life generally onset of puberty occurs in goats at 8 to 12 months the easter cycle is of 20 days the estrus or heat period is of 24 to 48 hours the gestation length is 150 days and the time of ovulation is 12 to 24 hours the age at puberty of goats depends on nutrition and health status a high plane of nutrition freedom from diseases including parasitism favors rapid growth and favors early puberty the estrus behavior or estrus signs in goats are the goats in heat will be restless they will try to associate with buck they will bleed frequently they will do waking of tail while rebreeding the doe it is important that we can rebreed doe after 3 months and we should make sure that a doe must give kids three times in two years uh, let's see the replacement of aged doe and buck it is important generally farmers do not follow this it is important that we should replace aged breeding male generally after 5 years and female we should replace them after 7 years this is because after that the performance of these aged animals reduces they will consume more feed and there will be lower feed efficiency now let's see some important points for breeding management the correct male to female ratio is 1 to 20 and while mating it is important that we should mate young males with older does and we should mate older bucks with young goats this will help in better mating and to avoid inbreeding repression we can use or we can replace males or exchange once in 2 years 
and uh, it is very important to detect estrus detection or heat estrus detection in all females goat above one year should be done either to approve or vasectomize buck both in morning and evening during the breeding season so that we can avoid unnecessary delay in conception the other important things a 90% conception rate in does may be ensured if one buck with one doe or two to three doe in heat are allowed to remain together for a whole day or a whole night provided it will be followed over period of three cycles we should make efforts to avoid kidding during peak winters because uh, the cold can cause pneumonia in kids and if pneumonia occur so there will be high chances of mortality so kids born in winter either need brooding or they must be provided with warm conditions it is very important that we should avoid starvation in goat even for two days because two days starvation period early in pregnancy can cause high percentage of shed embryos to be absorbed now the final or important managemental strategy under uh, stall feeding system is health and disease management health and disease management is very crucial because it can affect farm prof profitability as unhealthy goats they will grow slower there will be reduced feed efficiency they will eat more and the growth will be less there will be extra cost incurred in treatment of disease if outbreak occurs whole flock can be affected that can affect uh, the farm prof profitability hugely for uh, proper health management regular deworming coxidiosis prevention and vaccination is very important kids are more susceptible to endoparasites than adult animals therefore regular deworming should be adopted at the farm because warm load affect the growth can cause obstruction of intestine in young kids which can be deadly the coxidiosis is the most common cause of diarrhea in goats between 3 weeks to 5 month of age so for the prevention of coxidiosis good managemental practices and regular cleaning and disinfection of farm premises is very necessary to prevent important deadly and economic diseases in goats vaccination is very important now let's see the deworming schedule goats or kids should be dewormed at 10th day at 45th day at 60th day at 90th day and 120th day thereafter we can do deworming at the interval of 2 to 3 months or on the basis of fecal examination if the diarrhea is a, is a result of coxidiosis so we can use amprolium which can be given for 5 days at appropriate dose now let's see the vaccination deadly and economic diseases against which vaccination is necessary are number 1 pestidas pititis ruminans which is also known as goat plague a goat with ppr will have fever anorexia necrotic stomatitis diarrhea ocular nasal purulent discharge respiratory distress so goat should be vaccinated at 4 month and above for the ppr and it should be repeated at 3 years interval the second important disease for which we should go for the vaccination is goat pox a goat with goat pox will have pox lesions on lips oral mucosa teats and udder it is important to give vaccination at 3 month or above and the vaccination for goat pox should be done annually third important disease is fmd a, a goat will with fmd will be having blisters in mouth and will be having salivation there will be ves vesicles Uh, which will also found in intergenital space so goat should be vaccinated for fmd at the age of 4 month and above and it should be repeated at 6 month interval the other important diseases for which goat should be vaccinated are hemorrhagic septicemia enterotoxemia and anthrax the age at first vaccination of hemorrhagic septicemia is 6 month and above and it should be repeated annually whereas so in case of enterotoxemia the age at first vaccination is 4 month if dam is vaccinated but if dam is not vaccinated we can vaccinate a kid at 1 to 3 week now let's see some other uh, important managemental practices that uh, that are identification identification of kids and goat is very essential 
because it will help us in proper recording of the farm data proper care proper supervision and it should be done right after birth the small kids can uh, temporarily mark with dye or uh, on either side of the body and which can be soon replaced by ear tags the important records that we should make in our farm are birth or kidding register feed register growth register and vaccination and deworming register castration is very important all male kids and ram except those which are kept for future breeding must be castrated with the help of badijo castrator castrator and the perfect age for castration in goats or in kids is 21 days or 3 weeks it has observed that profit per animal is more in castrated animal because there is a additional body weight gain of 2 to 4 kg at the time of slaughter in castrated animals irrespective of uh, the take away message of this presentation i just compile it the demand of goat meat and milk it is increasing and under this reducing grazing land facility stall feeding system of goat is the best alternative grazing system the cost of per unit meat and milk production is maximum under stall feeding grazing system so for profit making it is very important that we should go with a strategy and a scientific approach the main area of focus should be correct breed selection category wise housing of goats feeding as per the need and we should calculate or recalculate feed requirement at 15 day especially in growing animals scientific breeding is very important proper health care and recording is very important we can grow fodder tree around the farm premises which will provide shade clean air as well as nutritious green fodder for the goats we will require large amount of hay and straw in stall feeding uh, management system so we should construct hay and straw store away from the main building this is to reduce the risk of fire we should also replace aged breeding animals like male should be replaced at 5 years and we should replace females at 7 years this is because after that performance of both buck and doe reduces it is very important that we should vaccinate animals so at last thank you